Previously on Team Mongoose Adventures, as dust ascends upon the jagged cliffs of Worm's Maw Coast, the five of you find yourself in the dim, cold cells of Cinderfell Penitentiary. What is happening? A sudden thunderous crack splits the air as raw energy erupts from below, shattering the stone and igniting chaos. As alarms blare and prisoners scramble for freedom, fate thrusts you together. A riot has begun and you are all defenseless. What will you do? Anyways, we're gonna play D and D now. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I didn't make a character sheet. I know you didn't. You guys are now presented in front of an armory. What weapons would be calling to you? Leaning against the wall, a slender rod made of obsidian glints ominously in the low light, faintly glowing with eldritch energy. I like eldritch energy. All right, let me get that rod. As you grasp the rod, you feel. A surge of dark power coursing through you. Yeah, that's and you good shit. faintly hear a voice off in the distance, but oh, as you no. turn around, <laughs> you don't see anybody. Okay? Give me the rod that talks to me. I'll look for like a meat cleaver or a machete. Right. Yeah. I have items written here that I thought would maybe okay. fall in okay. a lot of categories. <laughs> okay. And, and right. a meat cleaver is not one of them. At the far end of the corridor, you see a single cell that seems different from all the other cells. Inside of the cell, you see a lone figure. Please, don't leave me here. I don't belong in this place. I was just an apprentice. My master was experimenting with things he shouldn't have, and he left me behind to take a fall. I, I look at the man, stare him deep into his eyes, mm -hmm. and I consult the staff. I asked, I asked the rod, can we trust him? Words again do not come to your mind. A sense of confidence comes over you. You feel like you can you can break these cuffs. That's not what I asked. <laughs> hey, Ben, that's magic for you, Betty. I owe you my life. And as he steps Agreed. out of the cell, <laughs> the prisoner is interrupted by a wave of guards that round the corner into the room. All of you, surrender now. Roll for initiative. So I want to tell him that he was a disappointment, and I want to rip his head off with the with my beautiful shadow dagger. I want to say it loud enough that one hears it, because I want I want one to know this is why we're in jail. I whisper to my staff, what the fuck? <laughs> Let's just get really close and just use the, the head as like a like a like a flail and just flail him with the severed head. It's not gonna do any damage, but I'm gonna say that this man is now terrified. <laughs> and at that moment you see a portal open up. All of you guys pop out of this portal as well and all of you have escaped the prison i got one more question light dancer teach me how to make that portal i already know i just <laughs> want to see if you did it right well we did escape so not that you wouldn't understand the spell i feel like I you're judging me and i know i was just in prison but i'm actually really smart <laughs> so visibly uncomfortable in this conversation you all have a wonderful time he walks around the willow tree, but doesn't appear on the other side of the tree. I knew he had that. some fucking spells. Yeah, right? He had some fucking spells up his sleeve. Perry, can you do that? No, I can't fucking do that. <laughs> Thank you, Magic Man, for all of your help. I wonder what your rod will tell you to do next. Well, let's find out on this episode of Team Mongoose Adventures. So now I think it's a good time for us to all open up and finally introduce ourselves to each other. Well, Any, anybody anybody want to speak up? And, <laughs> any, any, you know, start the conversation between each other? Magic man. <laughs> <laughs> we went through a lot already together. <laughs> yes. What is your name? My name is not Magic Man. This is actually <laughs> Train Gilcoy. Okay, you will be Magic Man for me. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> this is going well. Uh, I, I I was a man of some importance in the cities uh, before I was wrongfully thrown into prison, mind you. Um, what 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 are we looking at here? So like, yeah, um, describe we're all your, your appearance. the character. Like, what am I looking at when I see you? Uh, a a average height, 
black human male with uh, shortish black hair with a white streak going through the top, uh, wearing shabby prison robes and clutching on to this dark rod for dear life. <laughs> uh, what about you? I pointed Jose. I, you seem I pretty infatuated with magic. I just haven't seen magic wielded as you wield at the tree. Fair enough. You seem like a good guy, though. You seem like you know what uh, what you're doing there. Especially, uh, you know, dealing with all that, uh, that guy. What's the guy's name, Bruce? <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Convin. You did a great job with Convin, uh, you know. So I'm just uh, surprised you didn't want to show us your magic powers even before that. But it's good to good to meet you. Definitely good that we uh, made it through that. I don't know what was all that, uh, that killing going on that we did there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, we, it's not what I would usually get into, but I feel we did what we had to do going to introduce yourself jose at all i said i'm built for that's oh did you yeah, you yeah. didn't describe yourself or nothing though you just we're talking about magic oh. like what you look like you know like i'm an eldritch so i'm like an elf kind of looking kind of guy got some long hair fair skin uh like woodland is that, is that... yeah that's right <laughs> yeah no I, just, I mean just a name and a cursory just description of what you look like off to the side of the campfire by himself you see this half orcish looking guy like just rigorously trying to scrub the blood off of his cloak. What's your name, friend? I, I jump back and, like, freaked out that someone's talking to me. Um. Yes, you. Um. My name's Ricky. Yeah. My name's Ricky. Oh, good to meet you, Ricky. I appreciate your support back there. You want to describe what you look like, Brando? You see kind of a scrawny, like, green-skinned, orcish complexion you know but it's obvious that he's not fully orc because he's kind of tiny and like more human size than anything else what, what what's human for in in um common? D, D common is it uh, just common yeah yeah, yeah, the, common. Language, yeah. the language common yeah oh uh, well is that what you mean no I, I meant more like as far as like just a human versus like a well, half orc humans are human yeah is yeah, human, humans human? are. Okay, yeah, they're yeah, just regular okay. humans. Yeah. yeah, yeah. More human-sized proportions. You know, very skittish. Looks like he's freaked out by just being there. So, uh, Ricky, is that uh, is that short for anything? <laughs> um. Well, that's what that's what people call me because my 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 full name is a little bit long. Oh, do tell. Uh, well, it's uh Ricky Tiki Tavi No So Ravi Charibari Bruchi Pip Perry Pembo. Okay, we're calling you Ricky. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Ricky it is. Who just Bless opened you, up Ricky. a bag of chips? What the fuck? That was me blowing ass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 All right, I think this is a perfect opportunity for everybody to look over. And everyone over looks at yeah. Alex's character. <laughs> You there, useless ones. <laughs> well, well, Brandon told his name. You got something to say over there? Uh, I just wasn't expecting all that to come out of his mouth. Then again, I haven't met a lot of half orcs, so. What's your name? Steelbreaker. Alex Steelbreaker. I'm a monk trained by the Silent Fist. I got thrown in jail because I have no love for authority. So when I saw. This poor old lady vendor just trying to scrape by selling vegetables. And the Lord's guards threatening to double the price for the protection of her stall I had to step in. They didn't like that. And I ended up where I ended up. Do you have any defining features or anything? Oh, like sorry. what you actually look like? A human with silver hair and blue eyes. Uh, 5'10", muscular, lean build. Starting to see uh, some, some connective tissue in terms of why we were all in prison to be like wrongfully of course okay. i look over at adrian and i um i ask him um what's your name my name is vince vince adair uh vince is uh you know human he's about like 5'10 blonde hair you know like a little comb over ish kind of deal you know like very like you know clean he's got blue eyes and uh, i think that's about it for now so I ask back to Ricky, I'm like, hey, Ricky, so what did you do to get in jail? Uh, well, I, um, I killed the mayor's dog. And, and then I fed him to, to the homeless people there in the village I was from, or near. He didn't like that very much. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> noble, a noble cause, I'm sure. It's like must have been a corrupt mayor. No, not really. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you say dog? I'm trying so hard not to laugh myself, but I can't. You know what? Uh, whatever your reasons, I'm sure they were noble. And as you guys all like look at each other and like kind of take a nice deep breath of relief of like, okay, these people are okay. Maybe some have some quirks with them that, but nothing evil. Nothing evil, really. Um, you guys, uh, hear a small, like, explosion a couple hundred yards away, and you all look over and see a faint firelight, like a campfire or something, and a bunch of smoke, um, about two, three hundred yards away, uh, all along the forest line. Um, is it like daytime, midday, nighttime? Uh, it's, it's, the sun has just set. So it's it's like just evening. Okay, so it's kind of like pronounced because it's fire. Yeah, well, you would see you would see the the fire uh, amongst the trees. Yeah, because it's it's darker now. You know. Yeah. That's why uh, I'm so you'll see that. the light. Yeah, and it's it's a lone light off about three hundred yards away, um, and you hear like a bunch of just like miscellaneous screaming um, mm -hmm. of maybe maybe humans. Maybe some non-humans. I run over and hide behind the tree. Ask, what do you guys make of this? Do we want to check this out? As you say that in the, on the distance, you just hear, I, oh! you should. I look around at everyone's faces and I say, are you fucking serious? <laughs> if, if, if anything, we, we just escaped our... magic prison. <laughs> We're fugitives. It's With pretty nothing close, but though. rags on our back. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, too, <laughs> just decided to lean in that direction. Ah, damn it. <laughs> uh, I shit, follow we go again. <laughs> I, I kind of mutter under, underneath my breath and follow. So, mm -hmm. you all go down? You all follow Adrian? I follow at a distance. It's not like we have anything at the campfire. <laughs> As you guys get closer and closer to this this uh, this ruckus that's happening over um, through the trees, you can see uh, a bunch of kobolds like jumping around and breaking things and uh, throwing things into this fire. And the screaming has stopped, but the chatter and uh, delightment of these kobolds dancing around, throwing things, breaking stuff uh, around this campfire. Um is uh is still around and you guys are like just getting to like these edge of the edge of these trees here um and they haven't seen you yet can i see how many kobolds are like in total uh yeah roll a perception check for me yeah okay yeah you you easily see there's about six of them that you can see uh, all right. around this camp so I will mention that to them. Off, you know, there's six kobolds. Yeah, did we be okay. seeing anything? Um, the... No. Are there okay. any after combat that's probably... dead bodies around? Like, where'd the screaming come from? <laughs> Do you want to roll a perception check as well? Okay, nineteen. Yes, um, yes. the The campsite is littered uh, with bodies. There's um, a bunch of uh, people that seem to be dressed in common adventuring gear leather gear whatever that are just lying on the floor dead um or at least not moving you presume dead um some missing like an arm another one you know just face down in a pool of blood um one of them they're dragging onto the fire damn it um, ricky is currently holding tightly onto his axe and shaking uncontrollably this is what you guys would be saying so what exactly is the plan here? There's a camp with stuff, but there are kobolds. We could use stuff. As much as I like stuff, I'm not crazy about nothing. going down there and getting murdered and thrown into a pile of fire. You you would know, you all would know, um, that kobolds in this world are like 
the the lowest level the entry level like thing that like <laughs> bare bones travel or adventurers who want to like go out and do stuff or like pretend they're adventurers they they get tasked to go kill kobolds basically explain uh, it in ro terms uh horrings, horrings. yeah <laughs> Terry, or what's your fucking name <laughs> gil Coy. we can take them all right fine but you're going first all right. <laughs> I'll turn to Ricky and be like, Ricky, it's, it's okay, buddy. We made it through worse. Any objections? A few, but I feel like it doesn't matter, so let's get it over with. Do, you want, okay. do we want to get surprise attacks out? Hell yeah. You could try. Do we have any ranged you people try. that want to try? Um, can I sneak over to this, behind this cart that's you, to the north of me? I'm sure he's going to say you can try. Here. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you can certainly try if you want unless, to. Look. Unless, unless Jose or sorry, what's your fucking name, Bill? Yeah, Bale you want to sneak over there? Nope, y'all. You wanted to go first. Go for it, champ. All right, fine. <laughs> All right, Alex, uh, roll me a stealth check. <laughs> He's gonna. Fuck oh <laughs> Jesus! Okay. All right, yeah. I was gonna what? What? What was I gonna think? <laughs> Alex, uh, just for the sake of the audience, too, make sure to call out your numbers as well. <clears throat> 23. 23. 23. Oh, easily. Easily sneaks over here. Unaware. I want to move over behind that tent. Right right <laughs> there, yeah. Um, Are there any voices or anything coming from the inside this tent? Uh, roll a perception check for me. Uh, roll a 10. A 10? I mean, yeah, you're right next to the tent. Um, there's uh you don't hear anything out of there you just hear these kobolds still like running around you know doing their thing out here throwing stuff around and and breaking stuff and okay right i want to attack this red one here can i wait as soon as he's about to swing cast a spell yeah if you want to hold a spell oh yeah. you want yeah. to coordinate that yeah so yeah uh spell casters you can hold you can hold your action anybody can hold their action if they want something to happen on the same turn um yeah. So oh, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to do it pre-combat. Are you sure you don't want to come back here before? <laughs> Maybe get another one. Uh, I mean, I got here pretty easy. Listen, you, you, you're you're out there, dude. You start talking, they're gonna hear you. I mean, if we're <laughs> trying to coordinate an attack here, you know, why not anybody else? All right. Since I see a, since I see Steelbreaker up there, I'm gonna go like to uh, Jose. Roll a stealth check for me. Rogue about to fail. Oh boy. Critical. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, never mind. Never <laughs> mind. <laughs> wow. They broke oh, things. Right. Twenty-six. Nice. Uh, oh, you're level yeah. two. Jose, you are you are the <laughs> you, wind. You become invisible. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Plus seven to stealth at level two is wild. That's what I'm saying, dude. <laughs> but this is gonna be his bread and butter, is stealth stuff. True. Um Jose with a twenty six, you can even move closer if you wanted to. If you want to go, keep going. Move right here, Jose. Can I, like, right? So I was saying, like, as far as, like, this area here, yeah, like, in that area? Yeah. Yeah, if you want to move over there. I'd say, like, right, like in between all of it, so I can either choose to, like, go back or... Okay. Okay, so all the boys are, are set, setting up for a sneak attack. Uh, we got Alex ready to go after the one here on the red, um, where Vince is also going to be going after him. Balefor snuck over with a 26 stealth check. Up to the top uh, thing up there, and he's gonna go over there. Uh, Ricky is shivering, so uh, I think he might be out of commission right now. Who okay. knows? And uh, you're the only one left. If you want to hold an action for a stealth or a surprise around, uh, can I get over here with a stealth with a successful stealth check? You can even with a failed one, you can get over there. Oh, okay, I mean, you're gonna, can wait, I just, wait, can I just don't trick him, please? <laughs> can I just go without a check? No, <laughs> no, that's okay. not how this works. All right, Everybody else who has gone over there has rolled a oh, has rolled a check. A check. You, right. you're, they, you guys can do whatever you want. I'm just gonna hey, laugh man. at it. It could have worked. Do it could have worked. I like roll that again. Uh, I like your, how Dwight worded that. Sorry. On your sheet, uh, there's a stealth skill. Just click the number after it. The yeah. number. Okay. Yeah. I rolled fourteen. A fourteen. Oh. A fourteen just makes it. So yeah, you can. You you feel sneaky today. You can get on over there. Man, got no plus either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, <Terry. laughs> that was one of those moments where as you're going over there, you're doing like the Scooby Doo sneak, and you're like you kind of step on a leaf, and but the kobolds don't don't notice. Just kind of cursing to myself under my breath. 
<laughs> okay, so Terry, what action are you holding, or who what are you action? gonna who are you gonna who are you gonna try to go for? So you oh. can hold an action to happen at the same moment that something happens. So Alex, I think, is gonna initiate combat, and when that happens, it'll do gotcha. a surprise round, and then you'll have an ability ready to go. Okay, I would like to target. Is that oh, no, he's dead. Get so oh, he's dead. <laughs> Is that who yeah. we're already after? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Alex is, and and Vince are both there. Uh, I believe your Elder's Blast has one, sixty then. feet, so you can hit that blue one, Terry, yeah, or the pink the or train, and then the <laughs> orange. So you can hit orange, blue, or pink. I'll shoot for blue. Okay. Can, am I going to need to move from behind this cart? Yeah, you have to have line of sight. Yeah, so I would say you probably just need to be like right here. You could stay right okay. here and still hide. Okay. You just pop out. Then yes, I will hold for blue. All right, if you guys are all ready, uh, let's roll initiative. Very first initiative. Jesus, Ricky. Ricky. Alex, you were, you were something else. I, honestly, <laughs> it, it didn't look like a good roll. It kind of hit the side of my screen. <laughs> just landed. Actually, yeah. wait a minute. Dwight, help me out here. What's that thing where I could swap my initiative? Initiative swap. Immediately after you roll initiative, you can swap your initiative with the initiative of one of the willing ally. Ah, there you go. So, so I'm 17. I'm willing to swap my initiative with you, Breaker. As long as you roll higher than I did. I rolled oh, seventeen, did. bitch. You rolled like six. <laughs> oh, did you roll already? I yes, think it's oh, right God. there. This <laughs> <laughs> man all sad already. about it, and I'm over here like I'm helping you oh, out, dude. Shit. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll swap it. Okay, so he has the seventeen, and I have the six now. Okay, that's so handy. You're welcome. You dog shit rolls. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna we're gonna okay. knock out this surprise roll really quick, and um, then we will uh, will initiate combat proper. Go ahead and and commence your guys's uh, uh, play here. So, Alex, are okay. you you starting this this shindig? Yep, I want to rush this red one. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna let you you have plenty of movement to get over to him. Uh, yep. How about I'll put, I'll put you on this side? That way, um, they're still room for that thing to get hit by adrian or vince sure um yeah, you want to move me okay uh roll to attack alex you uh, rush around the tent catching the kobolds off guard 13 uh yeah 13 hits so roll damage five alex rushes around the tent and just comes up behind this one kobold who's like throwing stuff into the fire or whatever and just punches them right in the kidney for five damage not bad uh okay who uh adrian i think you were next yeah, let me hit this roll here. And then after that, I think, Jose, you're on deck. The hit 16. Yeah, that hits. Now roll damage. Four. Four. Vince, like, I don't know what a celestial blast is. It's like a coming yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> well, let's, Is let's, it a rosin gun? Let's, like, <laughs> let's, 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 let's read this thing. It's a comet of cosmic light. A comet Okay. Out. Yeah, so it's so like a little kind of comment. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of a bang, bang attack. Yeah, so yeah, yeah then go. Adrian like grabs his or wraps his hands around him and then just shoots out this celestial beam and completely decimates this uh cobalt here and completely obliterate just to ash. Let's go. And that dead. one, that one's dead. One down, Jose. You're up. Uh, I'm gonna go and move to attack the pink one. Okay, you can move your token and then roll oh. to hit 16 hits four. Okay. Look at you. Jose runs around the, the tent. What? Oh, uh, the sneak attack damage too. I don't know if that can. Oh, yeah. You okay. can roll sneak attack damage too, as well, if you want. So I think that's under your attacks options. You just you roll one. Know. You're at 1d6 right now. And yep. plus another three for, uh, for yep. sneak attack damage for seven. That yep. one is looking pretty hurt right now. That one, <laughs> like, his, 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 his new dagger that as he whips it through the air, just kind of seems to disappear in the, in the, in the night sky. And then just right into the ribs of this kobold as it like screams out in pain. Um, genie already. All right. Um, who's next train. Uh, I think it's train and Ricky. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a it surprise matters. round because Ricky yeah, didn't exactly. seem like he had a plan. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> He plans to stand there pe- peeing himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, train, you're you're up. Right. I got the blue kobold in my sights. Okay, shooting the eldritch blast. All right, yep, to hit eleven. Ooh, eleven misses though. What? Eleven, just shy 
of this this kobold that's just on the outside of the range of your eldritch blast as it just whips by just whew, off to the side man you need to tell your staff to stop talking to you <laughs> whiffed <laughs> and ricky your last um, one if you wanted to do anything for the surprise round as as i see alex take down one of the kobolds i stop shivering suddenly and a manic smile starts to spread across my face, and I just <laughs> rush close to the closest cobalt as fast okay, as I can. Okay, I think you can only make it to here because yep, you have 30 feet fine. of movement. Yep, that's so fine. if you want to move your token. Yep, I will move him. You can dash. We oh, yeah, you can dash if you wanted to start your next uh, turn next to him. dash again? It's just a bonus action, or it's your uh, action. How, yeah, no, I meant how much, how much movement Another 30 feet. Another 30. Yeah, it's your movement, your full movement. And with a surprise, uh, so I can just be able to get yeah. to him. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. 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 I mean, you have a twenty-one initiative, so you're up first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Okay. All right, everybody. Let's begin combat. Ricky, you're up again. I rage. Oh God, Ricky. I rage. <laughs> oh, no, wait. No, I can't. That's a bonus action. I'm sorry. I attack. Oh. <laughs> oh, you can bonus. You get one bonus action and one action. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you Is can it... do it in any order. You, you any want. order. Okay. Okay. Any order. Yeah. You can move if you want. You can bonus. You can move five feet. Bonus. Move another five feet. Action. I will like rage. Okay. Battle axe to hit seventeen. Hit. Seventeen hits. <laughs> Nine. And, okay. Um. <laughs> so, uh, Ricky, uh, covered in piss running <laughs> through the trees after not saying anything and just whips this cobalt and in like in an anime fashion just two halves are just slowly falling <laughs> apart as it just bursts into a, a, a splash of blood and uh this this cobalt is toast <laughs> Damn. that one is dead all right you have your movement still um I charge into the next one. <laughs> hey, go for it. Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all the other people in, in his party now are just kind of like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next up, Alex. Steel right, breaker. I'm going to go for this. I'm going to uh, leap at this uh, orange one right here. Okay. Alex, Alex yeah. do me a okay. favor. Uh, go, go by the campfire. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Okay. Just saying, bro. Just do me a solid. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll move towards the campfire. Hey. Like right here. No, but I'm saying go go past the campfire. Stay away from the pink cold oh. so you don't get hit. All right. I'll go. <laughs> I'm meta right now, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You guys are gonna don't, you guys gotta learn so combat. Don't One, block his line of sight. Two. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying not to get him hit. Because he's gonna be he's gonna be running away. I'm trying Whatever. to help him out. You were you were here on this square. Right here. Yeah. Okay. So. One, Four, that's 20 five? 25 yeah just, it's yeah, easier just, just to count, count by, fives. by fives because yeah. then you get yeah. 30 it even says oh, yeah because it says there one square is five feet one so. square is yeah. five yep. yeah yeah so right here good adrian yeah. oh no it's not i'm trying to help you out here because if you would have walked by the pink cobalt dwight might have just done oh. attack of opportunity and you would have took oh, a good. Swing yeah, 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 yeah. yep so <laughs> just giving you okay. a heads up i'm not going to be doing this all the time i'll say i was just yeah. giving you a heads up now so you learn you know tricky <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Yeah, I'm gonna see him over there. Yeah. All right. Do your thing, boss. Do your All thing, right. boss. Uh, I'm gonna smack this. Yeah. Oh, roll a hit. Seven. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Alex running through a, right by the fire and the, kind of blinded and kind of like taken back from all the smoke that's coming from it. <laughs> it's his eyes are closed and he's just he's swinging wildly and completely whiffs. Um, it's the <laughs> <I'm> fucking. <laughs> All right, bail for your turn. All right, I'm gonna swing at pink. <laughs> yeah, tw yeah, twenty-one hits, baby. This guy's gone. Uh, yeah, six damage. Yep, you pull your dagger out and right back into the same spot, but this time you're just twisting it and pushing this thing down, and uh, you've killed this. The you've killed the pink kobold here. Yeah, that's how, that's how you're supposed to kill your enemy. Breaker. <laughs> That's how you do it. Light <laughs> <laughs> and got it. Okay, I want to move. I was just so this is. I guess to, so. This is a question I have for like um, what is it the roll advantage or whatever it's called where like it's the you're the, behind him. So like for that advantage, if I go like right here behind Alex to protect his six, could the other kobolds like get? Would they have advantage at any point if I'm behind Alex? 
No, I think he's just the, trying to use the uh, way that right. advantage works is that you would need to be on either compass, like uh, either side, opposite sides of something. So uh, if so you were up there here and here, then it's taking advantage in. But if, I mean, I can't like, see where you cl- clicked, but if you're using uh, the point thing, you have to click and hold. Yeah, I think you have to let your marker go, Jose. He's moving his character around behind yeah, Alex. He was trying to, he was oh. trying to was stand like behind Alex, so like they can't do that to him. I think is yeah. what he was trying to ask. Yes. Yeah. But, so I mean, if, if you, the kobolds go here and here on Alex, then, then they, they, they yes, him. they flank him. Yeah. Okay, so I'm like kind of protecting. Him. Sort yeah, of. I, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll do that. I'll kind of give him a little bit of coverage. Okay. I mean, you could do that, or you could just move to the top, and then can this I swing guy. Him? You can't this turn, but Alex will have advantage against this guy on his turn. Then the kobold can go behind me, and then, <laughs> and then, I, then yeah, and then listen, this kobold will go behind you. Hits, okay, I can't. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't that's it. Yeah. It was just the one time. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Well, th- that's your turn. All right. That's we great. apologize for Jose's min maxing right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's, guys, it's not. It's that I saw Alex miss. Okay, I can't. <laughs> I'm just not putting boring. myself in blank position. <laughs> okay. It is now the kobold, uh, the teal one here, his turn. Um, I don't know. Can I roll here? I, sure. I guess I, I, I think. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Can I roll his stuff through here? No, I should probably have my own dice on this side. That should actually be how I do this. Uh, so I'm just going to I'll just roll here for now. Uh, does a 23 hit you, Ricky? I think that is my armor value. Yes, actually. 23? Jesus. No. Yes, it hits. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Let's do one of these. I do okay, have you... damage resistance against piercing, bludgeoning, and slashing and rage. He's raging. Uh, oh, yeah. Perfect. Then you take one point of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Tis but a scratch. Rage. <laughs> Just kobold looking at yeah. <laughs> Just trying to like can't even get through your, your prison garbs. <laughs> Um, okay, that's his turn. Uh, yellow turn. He's coming up. He's gonna go over here and hit Alex. Damn. Uh, does a 10 hit you? No. Okay. <laughs> he's mad. Uh, he's <laughs> 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 All right, orange turn. He's also gonna hit Alex. Does a 23 hit you? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. You take one point of piercing damage. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, that's 1d4 plus 2, so you take 3 points of piercing damage. All right, Vince, you're up. <laughs> I'm just going to attack the, the green or teal. Same thing, okay. Celestial Burst. All right, roll to hit. 13. 13 hits. With a big old six. Yeah. Six. Not bad. All right. Coming back in with back-to-back Celestial Burst, just burning this other kobold <laughs> as it takes six points of damage. Not bad. Is that your turn? Thanks. That will end my turn. All right, Train, you're up. Redemption. Damn shit. <laughs> I move. Count count here. your movement. Count your movement. This is 30. Okay. Uh and I take a shot at the yellow kobold. Okay. Roll to hit. Here we go. Oh, okay, there you go. They loaded okay. in. 14. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 14 hits. Roll damage. Two hits. Six there points. And that was on yellow? Yellow. Okay, yeah. Train coming in with his Eldritch Blast a little bit closer this time and and then uh, just fires it right past Balefor as he can smell like the Eldritch energies that zooms past his head and blasts this one kobold right in the right in the head. Um, that smell like like sulfur. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, eggs. yeah, bad. We're back at the top of the round. Ricky, Ricky, you're up. All right. I'm rolling to hit. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, oh! Well, um, this time, <laughs> Ricky, drunk off of the blood of uh, his last uh, kill, um, just narrowly misses this kobold and just whiffs it right by the side of him. See, ain't so easy, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you still got your I movement already... if you wanted to move? <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay, Steelbreaker. All right, <laughs> let's try this again on the orange one. <laughs> All right, uh, eleven. <laughs> Man, Yo, so still, these kobolds got <laughs> he's surrounded. They, they, they got a high AC. What is this? <laughs> like super kobolds. 
<laughs> Bro! <laughs> um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, um, Sealbreaker whiffing it again. It's something that hasn't quite got the, the, the weight of these new gloves of his under control, I think. We'll, we'll say that, you know? So he's, his, he's practiced all his life with nothing uh, except for, like, wrappings on his, arm, on his hands. So got, the weight of these ones... Life. You know, and he's got ash and he's like surrounded by a cobalt. He just smelt a stinky Eldritch blast come through. He's he's having a hard time out here. All right. Hey, bail for you. It's your turn. Hold on. Hold on. Can I take oh, a yeah, bonus sorry. action? Yeah, sorry. You can do you can bonus action. My bad. I thought you were. Okay, then I, I'm yeah. going to use a focus point and use flurry of blows. You have a plus six to hit on that. A 20. 20. All right. Perfect. Yeah, nice. you hit your flurry of blows. 30, 20. So roll, roll damage Seven. for that. Seven. Seven on Bro. orange. A flurry? Dang. What the hell? Not bad. That's uh, that's pretty good. All right. So yeah, <laughs> Steelbreaker pissed off that he keeps whiffing, what? just in a slight rage of his of his own, just wildly throwing his fist at this cobalt, and just starts <laughs> like beating him up. <laughs> and does seven points of damage. Not bad. But he's still holding on. But this cobalt is like in bad shape. He's hunched over and he's like holding his abdomen, and he's like spitting up blood. Um, okay, bail for well, Now you're up. <clears throat> I got a question okay. though. So, yeah. we know for for uh, later, Fargus, he only used one of those flurries. Yeah, can you use the other mm, one on the I other can use, I I can only use two for every short rest. Yeah, he only no, has two points right now. No, no I'm not saying use key again strike. to flurry. He because flurry blows is two attacks, and he he only rolled one. So, can you use the other one? Or did he to make two unarmed no, no, strikes no, 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 as a no, no. bonus action? Make two. Oh, it's two. Is that what it is? Yes, yes, yes. It's not a second oh. attack. It's two yeah. extra attacks that you roll for. But that's what I'm saying. You killed him with one, so I was wondering if we want to end it there. It's just oh. for like future things. I was yes. Saying. No, you're right. Yeah, I think it is. It is two unarmed attacks as a bonus action. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case. Yeah. That's so. Um, that's what I'm saying. He still has one. So. Yeah. 18 hits. Yeah, You're welcome. go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hey, man, I gotta milk this team uh, out. <laughs> which, which one is this against? Alex? The orange one. <laughs> the orange one again. He's going back in for the orange one. He's, he's pissed oh, off he's at this dead. thing. He's um, fucking dead. Yeah, the, your second, your, your first punch hits, and then you come in for a second, just like ring her across the face of this thing, and you hear his neck snap as you punch him across, <laughs> and the thing falls down like 10 feet off this way. And dies. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, all right. Um, Is that I your still turn? Have movement, right? You have movement. If right. you move away from that guy, out of his. Okay, okay. all right. Oh yeah. wait, 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 wait! I didn't let go. <laughs> I didn't let go. Oh, I didn't let go. <laughs> I didn't let go. Yeah, you can. You can. Did you? What were you gonna say? What you can you gonna stay say? within five feet of him, so just you can do right that here. spin. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. You can okay, go, well, just just go to the opposite side because Jose, here. yeah, because Jose can just uh, Balefor can move up one space and then he's flanking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I wanted. I know. Okay. Okay. That's fine. As long as you don't leave their five feet, they don't get an attack of opportunity against you. So you can yeah. spin them around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Balefor. Now it's your turn. All right, move up. Get that flank, and I yes, go to attack. All right, roll to hit twice. Yeah, if you right click, you can choose to roll with advantage. Okay, on the, I rolled a twenty. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, you rolled a twenty-five. You rolled oh, a natural okay. twenty plus your five. Oh, so that's oh, you, know you what need that to means. make sure that you say <laughs> that you roll Frit. a natural twenty. Um, okay, Jose or oh. Bail for, excuse me, that hits <laughs> with, with the natural first natural yeah. twenty of the game. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Um, <laughs> congrats on your damage roll. You can right click and do crit damage. One. There oh. it is. Okay, and then Bale for stoked that uh, that Steelbreaker finally was able to hit something <laughs> with a little bit of extra trying. Um, Let's go. Is uh, is here to back him up and just slices through this cobalt with his dagger, and uh, it falls over dead as well. Congratulations! Um, you yes. guys only have one cobalt left, and uh, is that your Movement? Are you return? No, I'm gonna move over here to help out help out my boy Ricky. Okay. And I'm gonna That's... whisper into the cobalt and being like, You're on your own now there. <laughs> like you're on your own now, buddy. <laughs> Where are your friends? <laughs> okay. It's it's his turn now. Um and freaked out from the voice that just appeared behind him. Um and noticing that it's gotten eerily quiet 
from all the other kobolds <laughs> now being dead, uh, swings at Ricky. <laughs> a natural one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I think my arm is higher than that. <laughs> he rolled a natural one. <laughs> so yeah, um, he 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 doesn't even try to hit you, Ricky. He just kind of puts his hand on you, and uh, and and just doesn't know what to do. And that's gonna be his turn. Vince, it's your turn. This kobold is uh, is is hurt and he's scared. Uh, hey, Ricky, aren't kobolds like dogs? Are you hungry? I have line of I'm just gonna select. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna take a shot at him with Celestial okay. Burst. All right, roll a hit. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, twenty-one hits. Yes, go ahead and roll damage. Three. Three. Ooh. We're gonna draw how this you... one out. <laughs> barely, barely. So, how do you want to do this, Vince? What? I got him. Yeah. Damn. They only I'm, have I'm eight points. And you did brought him up to nine. So Vince holds up his his uh, newly acquired amulet and just radiates with divine energy and just like key blast with pinpoint precision just right through the sky Mm, and just pops a hole in the back of this kobold's head and he falls down dead congratulations everybody that's your first real combat you guys did it hell yeah 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 i gotta get the final fantasy victory music fanfare (laughs) (laughs) so you guys are now in this camp with a bunch of dead kobold bodies and dead um people bodies and a whole uh, bunch of caravans uh um, start inspecting the caravans and there yeah. doesn't seem to be anyone alive right like survivors think, of humans or kobolds that i think well, that's where most yeah yeah we're, well, we're gonna have to figure that out so okay. um uh, i think i'm gonna join that i'll help him with the a hub or all whoever is doing it with the search okay yeah, I'm searching um, caravans, yeah. So. yeah should you guys can move your tokens where you want to search things you know, I'm over you know, here. walk over here and sit on this bench. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna okay. walk over to Ricky really quick. Okay. You know, um, give him a nice, you know, pat on the shoulder and ask him, How are you feeling, boss? And then <laughs> give him guidance at the same time, you know, like sneakily. <laughs> <laughs> sneakily, okay. So you're, you're moving over over here to Ricky, yeah. I'm gonna tap, okay. give him, like, you know, shoulder tap, good job, buddy. How are you feeling? And then, you know, like I said, sneak a little. Guidance. I'm really in this searching him. Okay. I'm in the wagon. I freak out when he touches me and I just look at him like um, I, I, I'm I'm okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. That was scary. <laughs> I don't know about that. You took that dude and uh made him disappear. <laughs> oh. I, I don't really remember doing that. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Yeah. And he starts just going through the tent to see if there's anything, you know, anyone who's still alive. Okay. Um, why don't you uh, roll an investigation check with advantage for me? Investigation with advantage. You have guidance. Yeah. And guidance. Because uh, Vince is technically helping you look as well, and he gave you guidance yeah. as well. Ooh, yeah. excellent rolls. Excellent rolls. And you... I think guidance is a D4? Yeah. Yeah, so roll another D4. Yeah. So twelve total. Um, yeah, you don't. Uh, you're not finding anybody, you know, alive in there. But you are finding just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, like random bits of food, bread, um, you know, some dried meats, equipment, like standard uh, adventuring equipment, like a rope, uh, you know, leathers, that sort of thing. I will take anything that's like food related as well as a if there's a dagger of some sort I'll take one of those too like a a well serviced one you know not like a cobalt yeah. dagger <laughs> Yeah you would you would find a, a just a regular old dagger in there as yeah. well um yeah. and I don't know how you want to do the food thing if yeah. you want to if you yeah. want to start doing food stuff but if you want to just keep a tally uh, or uh, like a little a separate notepad or something like that of the food that you find Okay. Um, just so you have it on hand. Um, yeah. Let do you find like three half loaf like things like of bread, um, and like two apples. Okay. Uh, bail four. Roll an investigation check for me. Steel breaker, you can as well. Train. I don't know if you're doing anything or if you're just relaxing. I am just relaxing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's Roll fair. Nineteen. Roll a twenty. 
Dirty 20. Okay. Bale 4, you find uh, a bunch of kind of the same. You find a bunch of miscellaneous food in there, rations, uh, some rope, uh, like various dis like pelts of wool uh, and leather uh, that they looked like they were probably going to go and try to sell. Um, you also find another um, like small like packet of just standard weapons like daggers and like um, regular swords. Uh, like one-handed swords and stuff like that. Uh, you also find a little coin pouch with uh, 15 silver in it. Taking money. That's uh, going straight to the pocket. Taking the leather and pelts, going to hold on to those. And then I tell everyone, like, hey, there's some weapons here too. If anybody needs something, and I grab myself another dagger. Yeah, feel free to add that to your inventory if you want. Uh, or you already have one, so you could just keep that one. Because you guys will get your stuff here in a minute. Um, Alex, uh, Steelbreaker, what are you searching? This cart here. Same thing. You find various pelts, uh, various uh, leathers. You find like a bunch of like different types of wine jugs. Um, and you also find a little bit of money as well. You find nine copper. Trey, there's wine here. You want some? Oh, now we're talking. I'm walking over here. Wine. <laughs> <laughs> Zooms over. <laughs> there's about five wine jugs there, all sealed up. Brand new ones. I grabbed right. one jug. And take it back to my seat. <laughs> I grab two and take them back <laughs> and set Christ. them on the ground. Train, as you're leaving that cart up there, uh, you hear a voice in your head. Not words. It's not words. It's just an inclination. As you grab the one, as you sit there and look at them and you think, I'll just grab one and turn around. You're like, I don't know. Maybe I grab two? <laughs> Why not? I get back up and I go grab another one. Uh, no, this was like as you were leaving. The, oh, the as I was leaving. Yeah, I grabbed, yeah, I grabbed two then. And you turn back around and you grab two. Okay, and then I'll put you back over there. Oh, boy. So there's only one left? Yes. I take it and park myself right over here. Well, actually, no. How many did you take? I thought it was Alex five, Alex right? took two. Five. Yeah. Yeah. So they took three amongst them, right? No. Terry oh. and Alex Terry took, took two. Terry took two and then Alex took two. So four and Oh, I took okay. One. Okay. Yeah, I All don't right. mind sharing though. <laughs> you say out loud to everybody. I don't mind sharing. <laughs> just, hey, just <laughs> FYI. Hey, <laughs> as you pat the bench next to you. <laughs> I know. Uh, you want to eat on this? I okay. will continue looking for food stuff, and if there's anything that we can cook with. Uh, okay. Yeah. As you you rummage around, you find a little bit more. Like you find um like a package of of dried meat. Um, not sure what meat. You know, necessarily, um, you find some like a bag of herbs, you know, uh, just loose leaf herbs. Uh, and there's already like a setup on the fire. Well, there was a setup on the fire for cooking stuff, but they cobalts threw a body onto it. Remember? So um, that's there still. I'm going to say I'm walking around with the drink, drinking a little bit. And I'm going to go check inside this uh, tent. This one seems to be the tent that the... Um, where they were talking about where they're going and everything like that. You find a small desk with a map of the sword coast on it. And, um, on that desk, you find another coin purse with, uh, uh, 10 silver, one gold in it. Uh, they don't seem to be a very rich group of merchants. They were definitely trying. Um, <clears throat> and you find, uh, a flyer that's on the table as well that uh, is talking about a festival that is happening in Neverwinter that started, uh, well, I mean, I guess you wouldn't know what day it is, but <laughs> it has a start date on there. <laughs> Taking the money, pocketing that, no one knows, and then uh, grabbing the map <laughs> and the flyer, and I'm pop out of here and being like, hey, uh, got this uh, map and flyer here, if anybody wants to look into this. Vince? I think. <laughs> you seem I, like the reading type. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you know spells and stuff, you can read. <laughs> Okay. I'll look I'll take a look at it. Yeah, it's a festival that's happening in Neverwinter. Um that is celebrating a fallen hero that uh saved the city from uh some trouble a couple years back who has uh recently passed away. Um you said in Neverwinter. Do I kn know like if this location is close by or what uh yes, Carbon Carbon did tell you before he left that like uh. Neverwinter is less than a day's you know 
travel out and he pointed towards and down the road. Okay. 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 So I think I'll hold on to the fire for a little bit. And then uh, I guess once we all settle down and decide to like maybe chit chat, that I can bring it up at that time. So, and then I saw okay. I tell Belfort, thanks. Uh, let me let me do a little bit more checking around, and then we can get you know we could talk about this if need be, or, or if it comes up. <laughs> hey Ricky, I'm gonna hand him over some of his wines, and this helps calm you down there. Looks like you gotta calm your nerves down every now and then. Oh, um, I I, I don't really drink though. You do now, there, bud. Try some. Well, the last time that happened, I woke up and I wasn't wearing any pants. Okay, have a sip, not the whole bottle. <laughs> I take a little sip. A little constitution and... check. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, you guys are good. You're good. You're good. He's a lightweight. <laughs> nah, it's just dude, I want to see it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I turn a slightly lighter shade of green and continue searching for, for stuff through the wagon. <laughs> you, uh, you find like a, a cook, like a pan cooking pan yes. and cooking utensils and stuff. <laughs> this seems to be the cart because it was right next to the tent where you found a bunch of the food or whatever where the uh, the utensils and stuff are. So you find all the the stuff that you'd expect to have for like cooking while camping. Um, awesome. A, a, like a cast iron pan and um, like a ladle, you know, uh, some other things like, like a spatula. I will go over to the fire and start trying to make some food then. Uh, let me get a side question. You want me to get rid of some sure. of these items in my inventory? Like I have mess kit and all this other stuff. I can get rid of it and just leave the bedroll. So uh, we're just going to say with all your guys is investigating here um, that you would have found all of the things that you would need in a basic gear wise. Basic gear. Okay. Um, yeah. So anything that you guys would start with, you know, your, even your starting armor and stuff like that, which would be like leather or... Um, I don't think any of you have anything like crazier than that. I'm at scale. Um, yeah. So unless you I want me to start with leather, I, I don't mind starting with leather if you want. Yeah. Let's start you off with leather. Um, but let me change. But yeah, leather and like basic weapons and stuff like that. Um, basic adventuring gear. So like your rope, your rations, your bed rolls. Hey everybody, Dwight here. I just wanted to take a little break from the episode to thank you all for listening. Uh, this is a brand new adventure for us. We've never really done kind of a radio show uh, sort of thing where we're really trying to focus on the audio aspect. If you want, there is a video aspect of this that will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. Uh, however, most of it is just going to be listening just during the battles and stuff. I'm going to try to keep up the battle map. That way you guys can kind of see what they're doing. But yeah, uh, we worked out a lot of the kinks with the audio on this episode. However, there is still one glaring one, and that's Jose's mic. Uh, turns out he's been talking to the backside of his microphone for the last six years, and we just fixed that now. Uh, so in the next episode, he'll be a little bit more clear and um, won't sound like he's four feet away from his microphone. I also wanted to give a huge shout out to everybody who supports me outside of uh, this podcast, people who uh, subscribe to my Twitch or my YouTube channel um, or are a member of the YouTube channel, because we have been using that money now to upgrade everybody's microphone setup. So in this episode, Terry has a brand new microphone. He has an AT2020 now, and uh, that's why he sounds much better. And in the next episode, Adrian is finally going to get an AT2020 as well. So everybody at this point should have a good microphone, a solid microphone that isn't just a headset mic or something of that nature. And um, that's because of all of your guys' support. You know, uh, the, the, the hope is that we can really upgrade everybody's setup to where we can make this a really nice and enjoyable thing to listen to. Uh, the boys are also all brand new to D&D. I think only Adrian and Brando have ever had any experience with D&D to any degree outside of just like a little bit and uh, have watched other D&D shows like Critical Role or maybe even Dimension 20. So they kind of have an idea of what they're doing, but everybody else is very new. They don't know what they can do, when they can do it. So 
I would appreciate if you guys help us uh, work through these growing pains. Um, maybe if you want, toss them a uh, toss them a, a friendly little encouragement or something on social media. A lot of us have moved over to Blue Sky. You can find us there. Um, my URL is really easy to find. It's just Dwight.tv. So you can find me there. And then everybody that I'm following, if you just go to who I'm following, you can find the rest of Team Mongoose as well. This is also a huge and new change for me as an editor, because I've never had to do this sort of edit before where I'm managing, uh, six different audio channels, trying to mix in music when I can, or when it makes sense. Uh, sourcing music has actually been incredibly difficult. I hope you guys like the new theme song. Uh, that's something I actually paid an artist to do for us. And that took a couple of weeks to, to kind of hammer out, to get something that kind of fits the vibe that I'm going for here. Uh, anybody who's listened to the adventure zone podcast, I'm kind of shooting in that range. I'm trying to, I'm trying to go their, their route. Uh, please don't, you know, send me any hate or anything like that. This is truly just out of like an homage to just how wonderful, uh, that podcast was edited. And it was very much the same thing where a lot of them were new, um, to playing D and D and I just loved the vibe of it and, I, and that it was a little bit more loosey goosey, uh, more on the rule of cool. And, um, the boys are going to slowly warm up, I think, to the role-playing aspect of things. It's, uh, it's really a difficult thing to do. I think it's much easier to listen to people do it than it is to actually be in the moment and try to think, what would I do? How can I do this? How is this not metagaming? How would my character handle this situation? That sort of thing. So please be patient as we iron out these kinks. Um, any words of encouragement, like I said, would be greatly appreciated. Not, you don't even have to send it to me, send it to the boys. They, they need it. Uh, because as of right now, they're just like, yeah, you know, combat's cool. But, um, I, I there is a big portion of D and D that is just role playing where we're going to have to like go into cities. We're going to have to talk to people. I want to do more of that sort of interaction as well, because it's easy just to throw a bunch of kobolds at them. But, um, I think that the real meat of D and D is in the role play. Another thing that I've been throwing around in my head is starting up either a Patreon or even making it a members only thing on YouTube for our after session talks that we've had. Um, I have a couple of, uh, episodes of me working through, um, people's character creation in the beginning, which may not come out ever, or if they do maybe f further along on the story, because we talk about spoilers of what they're goal is with their characters and how they're sitting. I think we'll probably also do like maybe one-on-one -on -one sit downs with the, everybody and get their feelings on um, how the campaign's going, what they find interesting and everything, just something a little bit more guided and a little bit more personal so we can get a little bit more insight on those characters. I really don't like putting anything behind a paywall because a lot of you guys out there have supported us throughout the years just by viewing and being around and being part of the community and not necessarily something that um, needs to be driven by money. Um, so perhaps in the future, we will move those, some of those options over and uh, upload those up onto the YouTube or something of that nature. I'm trying to not mess with my YouTube channel too much because I want this to kind of be its own thing, but we don't have a name for it yet. And I'm not sure what else to do with about that. And if it's going to live on YouTube, I'd like for it to at least be monetized just because YouTube likes these long format sort of things because they want the retention. Shout out to everybody who gives it the retention that it deserves. I'll try to keep the ad placement down to a minimum. That way it's not too disrupting through the whole show. I just need to throw in a couple. That way YouTube actually promotes the show and we can get more eyes on it. I do appreciate any feedback as well. You can hit me up on our Discord channel. Uh, that's uh, discord.gg forward slash tmongoose. Uh, I think there's a link down in the description on YouTube or my Twitter. Like you can find it pretty easily. Okay. This is also something that I'd like to do at least once a month. If not, we can uh, more. It, it really depends. The, the editing is really what's going to be hard for me because it takes a long time. So maybe if I can find someone to help with that in the future, you know, maybe if the Patreon does take off or something, I can afford to pay someone to edit it for me that I can trust to take out like the pauses or take out unnecessary bits because what you guys are hearing is absolutely not what we've recorded. <laughs> I take out a lot of bits where I'm talking to the boys about stuff, kind of walking them through things or even the ums and ahs that kind of proliferate the entire thing because 
it, that's a really hard thing as a human to stop doing. I'm very guilty of it as well. Anyways, again, thank you everybody for listening. If you have any ideas of what we should call this, please let me know. I'm going to talk to the boys about it as well. Maybe we'll come up with a name before this comes out. Who knows? But right now I've just been calling it Team Mongoose Adventures. Are they the Mongoose Adventure? I don't know what I, what I called it. Anyways, let's get back to the show. I suddenly <laughs> gasp. <laughs> just okay. staring at my rod. <laughs> when I grab guys- my, my little thing of wine. Train just woke back up. back to reality. You <laughs> good, man? Oh. As you, uh, as train snaps back to reality, um, oop, there goes gravity. Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, at the same moment that he does that, he feels a slap on the, his back. And he goes, ah, you guys have done pretty good out here. <laughs> and as train looks around, just between him and Alex, Steelbreaker, as if not even hearing him or anything, you guys see a tiny little gnome man dressed in all green, big pointy hat. He's got multiple ear earrings in his ears. He's holding like a little um, uh, wooden staff that has like just a bunch of shit like attached to it for no reason. And he's holding a little briefcase. He's got his own little adventure set up and a cloak. But he's just like all, all, all green. You know, he goes, you guys just smash those kobolds like no other. I've never seen anything like it. You guys must be a, a group of uh, the, the finest adventurers this side of the Sword Coast. Okay, well, we are certainly a group, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Thank you, friend. Who are you? Oh, excuse me. Of course. My name is Barnabas. Barnabas Billabo of Billabo's Bags and More. Thank you very much uh, for for helping me take care of these kobolds. I I had to uh, to excuse myself when they came by and dispatched of the uh, my my uh, group of mercenaries that I've I've hired to protect me on the way here. <laughs> Not very good mercenaries, mind you, but I didn't pay for good mercenaries, so I guess <laughs> that makes sense. Um, perhaps maybe I'll hire you guys next time as he's going around like just like touching all of you guys and like pulling on your garbs and stuff like that. It's like, so what are you? Are you guys like a dance crew or something? You're all dressed the same. <laughs> uh-huh. Just kind of look around the group and give everyone a knowing kind of like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> this, this, this dude is like two feet tall. Like he's the tiniest little motherfucker that you guys have ever seen. Well, I'm less concerned about him being intimidating and more about we just broke out of prison. <laughs> Don't want him to know that. So anyways, you guys hear that the prison just had a, just exploded? Exploded? Isn't that crazy? No, this is the first we've heard of that. We were simply travelers on our way to a festival. festival yeah. The festival at Neverwinter? Yes, yeah. the very same. <laughs> How convenient! <laughs> I'm also going to the festival. Oh I have boy. a stall there. <laughs> and he lifts up his little briefcase and he taps it with his like staff and he's just like, I got a bunch of things I want to sell. Well, hopefully not wine, I say, as I take a sip of the wine. <laughs> no, I don't deal in wine. I'm I'm more of a trinket man myself. Uh, and <laughs> he's just like looking around and just like sees your fancy rod and then looks over and sees steel breaker in the, just the same garbs but he has these leather gloves with iron knuckles and then looks over at vince who has a very very like fine looking amulet and then ricky with his like shining battle axe and then balefor over there just like twirling this dagger of his with like a shadowy blade on it and is uh, then notices while looking at balefor um oh oh my god and he runs over and he like grabs onto the utility belt that Balefor is wearing it's like where did you find this so <laughs> i'm uh i want to be like okay buddy too close oh, oh excuse me excuse me <laughs> you know i'm just so excited i have it's been years since i've seen this and he points at the front pouch of it and then that's when you look down and you look at the pouch and you see 
an embroidered patch of this little gnome on this little bag of yours. And he has like a thumbs up on it. And in fine print down below it, it says like um, Billabo bags and more on it. Or just bags and more. I think it's just what it is. I'm going to just tell him that uh, I was a, a mercenary and it was a, it was a form of payment that was given to me by one of the clients. That's fantastic. I've not seen this for decades even that you don't even know what you have do you oh, excuse me of course uh, do, do you know what you even have well it helps right now for uh going on you know doing work and being out there got this rope in here as well so it's uh, pretty good not sure <laughs> any parts of it but it's definitely useful it leans he kind of like leans in have you tried any of the other pockets it's a couple i mean is there something specific i need to look for uh, then no but by all means try try any of the try this one and he points off to the a pocket on the right right there right there i need to i want to roll for like insight and see like if he's like bsing me because like, <laughs> by all means yeah roll an insight check 14 uh no he he's just he seems very excited seems to be telling the truth all right so we go and check that that pocket okay roll a d100 for me oh 100 oh, oh here we go <laughs> Wild magic. It's the freaking... <laughs> is, this, is this wild magic? It could do I just be. do it in the can I do it in, Actually, do it in the end? Roll roll me two D tens. Wait, what? Okay. D10. Uh, D10. No, he rolled D10. two he rolled two D tens, but just added you can click it twice. Oh, yeah, oh okay, okay. Yeah, so uh mm. yeah, you open up that, that pocket and you pull out a rusty nail. And he's like, yes, <laughs> it still works. This is incredible. Now open that one. And he points at another pocket. What about uh, this nail? Uh, what about it? You, have, you didn't have a nail and now you have a nail. A rusty nail at that. Mind <laughs> you, go on. And he points at the pocket again. Okay, I'm going to check it. Why not? I'm already drinking. All right, roll another two D10s for me. Can I, ro can I roll up this piece of uh, oh pamphlet? God pamphlet or piece of paper whatever this is and throw it at him throw it who <laughs> the, the merchant <laughs> barnabas <laughs> yeah if you want uh let me do that let's wait and see i'm what trying happens. to i'm trying to catch his attention no i i did my rolls so yeah well uh, jose i'm gonna need you to roll another d12 a single one 12 yep this dude might be trying to kill him Wait, real quick. Okay. How would you spell this guy's name? Bill of <laughs> Barnabas. Barnabas. Oh. Barnabas. Oh, Barnabas. I guess I could Bilibo. go that way. Billibo. Okay. Yeah. As in Doug Timidon. B i l i b o. Okay. Doug <laughs> Timidon. Okay. Um, Jose, as you open up that pocket, um, and you pull out the the contents that is inside you find a small bag of dust that you're not quite sure what it is. And, you know, you kind of maybe look at Where'd Barnabas again, like, <laughs> what is I know this? why he's the way he is now is from this dust. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Be careful with that, okay? What you have there is a bag of dust of disappearance. When you throw it, the dust renders all creatures and objects in a 10-foot radius invisible for a certain amount of minutes. I haven't been able cool. to really pinpoint the amount of minutes, but it, it, it'll do it. It'll make them invisible uh, for like maybe under 10 minutes ish. You know, so how much do I need, though? The, the, the whatever to cover it, whatever you're trying to cover to make invisible. Huh. And it's like it's like a small bag. So it's like, you know, like a handful. OK, is there anything else I need to know about this? Uh, About the dust? No, no, just the belt itself. <laughs> oh, uh, well, <laughs> it's a, it's a wealth of 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 uh, of of goodies. Uh, so, uh, sorry, and he kind of waves at everybody. And as he's turning around, like waving at everybody, he gets hit by this <laughs> this <laughs> the flyer from yeah. from uh, yeah. Vince. And he goes, oh, no, no, you dropped this. Uh, and he picks it back up and he, oh, yeah, the, the festival. Uh, the, the, my, my name's Barnabas, okay? I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of an enchanter. I make things. I, 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 I have a business called Bags and More, and that's where I've started. And this right here, and he points out the utility belt. This was one of the very first things that I considered a success. I didn't quite 
I was trying to make my own bags of holding and then I kept failing and I kept failing and failing and failing. And I ended up just putting all of those failures into one belt. And so, um, I, I did the, I couldn't put things in it, but I could always take things out. Um, and, uh, they just kind of seem to be filled with junk that I've had throughout the years. So, um, it's a little unpredictable, but you know, sometimes you get this, you get cool stuff like, like this. And he points at the dust bag <laughs> and he points at the rusty nail too. And what with this, you know, <laughs> what you, you could have needed a rusty nail and it would have been the perfect time to have one. Yes. Rusty nail would have helped a lot in that battle with kobolds if we were trying to give them tetanus. <laughs> True. <laughs> I hand him the nail and say, here you go. He goes, ah, thank you. And he opens up his cloak and he drops it into one of his pockets while he's just, and he's just continually holding out his cloak as he's like staring and smiling at you. And then you hear like a ding, 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 like in the, like the, like seems like something like 50 feet away as like the nail seems to hit like a bottomless or a floor that's just 50 feet away in his cloak and he closes it back up and I'll, I'll, I'll get that later. Right. Let me uh, let me hit him with some riz. Let me uh, get a oh boy, here we persuasion. Go. <laughs> I don't. Little, did you have enough persuasion, to drink? Now you know. I got a little tipsy. You got a little buzz going. You know, All let's, right. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Courage. Uh, I say uh, hey, what's it, Barnabas? Barnabas. That's, that's me. A name. That's a very interesting cloak you have there. It sure is. I made it myself, and he's like tugs on it. You know, in a former it looks life, looks great. Yes, it does. Thank you. In a former life, I used to deal in curiosities such as this. Oh, you're a fancy man yourself. Uh, love yes, a good trinket, yes. do you? I love a trinket. So tell me, as a reward for saving you and perhaps <laughs> escorting you to the town, would you perhaps let go of that cloak? Well, this, I don't think that this cloak is going to fit a man of your stature, but a reward sounds like a great idea. And so he, then he walks over to the other side of the uh, fire pit here and uh, puts down his little briefcase that he's been holding on. Now, everybody back up, back up. And he's like kind of like, you know, pushing you guys off to the sides a little bit. And he takes his, 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 his staff and he just goes, taps it twice and then just, Thunk! and like a giant uh, like a stall that's probably about 10 feet wide by 20 feet tall and like big bright lights that says <laughs> Barnabas Billabo and then it says bags and more and it's like little like Vegas lights on it you know going around it and he goes come on come on over here and he walks behind the stall and then he just go down like the like the the old trick where you'd like the, pretend you're walking trick. downstairs yeah. be behind <laughs> like uh uh behind a couch or something he does the same thing and you see his little green hat just going down one step at a time uh, and and you can just hear him come on come on come on come on down here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well we gentlemen follow if we're interested in the <laughs> reward i suggest we follow uh, follow him into the ground? I guess so. So we'll step behind the, the the counter and follow him down wherever he went. Yeah, as soon as you go oh. around this, the counter, you see a, a set of stairs that go down into the ground. Okay. I'm, going, I'm following. I'm going. That's fine. I take a swig of this wine and I, I go. <laughs> okay, you guys all go down? I will continue to cook unless I'm finished cooking. I don't know. <laughs> Ricky don't care. You would be, you would have been finished cooking by now. Okay. I feel like this wouldn't be. I also take my wine with me. Yeah, let's say you made like uh, like four rations worth. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, and you guys all follow Barnabas down these stairs, and what just seems mind blowing to you guys as you're walking down these stairs is like there is no ground. The ground, the, 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 it, you're not walking into the earth. You're walking into a warehouse. And it's not a small warehouse. And he's not alone. It is a giant warehouse. Bigger than like a Costco would be. With shelves of things. And like little other gnomes running around. Like pushing carts. And like little trailers like moving things around. And there, you just hear like 
things breaking and hammers and a bunch of stuff going on. And Barnabas is like going down these stairs. He's like, oh, come on, come on down here. And um, he walks over to a counter and turns back around and goes, welcome, welcome to my warehouse. And then just like points at like all of these like other gnomes that all are like the same height as him. You know, uh, they seem to be color coded uh, with like what departments they may work in. They have, <laughs> some of them have like badges on their on their coat um, that have numbers associated with them. You see some of them walking around with clipboards, like screaming at other ones and stuff like that. And um, he walks over to this like workbench of his and um, starts like pulling out all the drawers and stuff like that in there. And Terry, why don't you roll me a D12? D20. Roll me a D20. D20. Man, a D&D Sam's Club would be great. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what do I have to roll to pick my jaw up off the floor? Because what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's going to... Uh, he finds a journey. Ah, here we go. And he pulls out a single-handed size bag that jingles. And he's not even, like, looking at you guys, but is, like, throwing it behind him with like pinpoint accuracy at each one of you. Uh, it's up to you if you want to catch it. Um, but it's a, uh, uh, he throws a bag at Bale for, he throws a bag at train, he throws a bag at R Ricky, throws a bag at Vince, he throws a bag at Alex and he turns back around. And did any of you guys, what are you guys doing with it? It hits you know? me in the face and I catch it in my hands. You guys oh, can yeah. catch him? Catch it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yep. You catch it. You you open it up and you look inside, and it is just filled with coins. Like, uh, in fact, uh, why don't I uh, roll you guys some some money here? All right. So in those bags, you guys find ten coppers, twenty five silver, Jesus. and seven gold pieces each. Hopefully, this will all suffice all of you. Thank you very much for saving me from those those nasty little kobolds. Um, I could have been in a real pickle there. Would you, would you happen to have any... Fuck, what did I have? Scale mail in your warehouse? Uh, sure. I, I, of course I have scale mail. And he, like, looks over at, a, at another gnome. And he goes, you! Scale mail! <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that other gnome, like, drops the things that he's carrying and he just, like, bolts off, like, to go, go find some. I'm more than... Like, I don't need the gold. I'll, I can just take the scale mail. Uh, well, okay. I, mean, I step no, in I... and say, well, <laughs> since you so generously offered the gold, I think we should keep it. Uh, okay. If there's a deal to be made for the scale mail, I would be happy to facilitate. <laughs> now, now, I see you are uh, you're, you're a man of the persuasion variety as well. I think you and I are a lot more alike as he's like looking up at you. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> And uh, he goes, I, I, I don't mind parting with, uh, I, I, assuming you're fine with the unenchanted type. Um, obviously, I can't give away my the good stuff, you know, <laughs> that's pretty pricey. Well, um, given that we're, you know, responsible for saving your life. True, but it was just kobolds and, you know, I've well, given you my you had mercenaries that were murdered by these kobolds in front of you and thrown into a... A pyre of fire. I think perhaps they were a little tougher than the garden variety kobolds you're used to. You may say that, but <laughs> honestly, who was protecting who? Okay. I don't know. I felt like I, met, I damaged my. I don't my believe you have bit anything there. to say, sir. I saw you out there, and it was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't know. I beat the shit out of that one. <laughs> I don't know about you. I, I killed a kobold. <laughs> <laughs> I broke his neck. <laughs> I believe that this is going to be the beginning of a wonderful friendship. And, you know, perhaps we can make more deals in the future. And I believe that we should all start on a good foot together because I have things that you guys need. And I'm sure there's going to be things in the future that I will need. And you have all proven yourself quite handy. And quite skillful, mind you. Uh, and then he kind of like waves his hand looking at Alex. Um, I wonder if we could trouble you for some 
clothes that aren't filthy and disgusting. Oh yeah. Uh, you may have been gone during that time, but I, I mentioned, um, that in the campsite, you guys would have found like all of the basic needs that you would have needed gotcha. for like an adventure stuff. So you would have found like some clothes and like uh, leather armor and stuff like that. Adrian asked for scale because there wasn't any at the gotcha. camp. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell uh, me, Barnabas, what do you make of this? As I show him the rod. And he like looks at it and he goes, well, <laughs> by all means, this is this is my specialty. Let me do you mind? And he holds out his hands to hold it. I kind of hesitate and pull it back a little bit, but <laughs> reluctantly <laughs> let him hold it. Uh, okay. And he, he picks it up and he kind of like looks at it and he like, he holds it. And to him, it's like a full size staff because he's two feet tall. Um, but uh, he's like, ah, yes, no, this is actually, this, uh, uh, this is incredible uh, what you have here. Uh, and he, he, here, let me, let me show you a little trick here. And he, he backs up a little bit. And he taps it twice against the ground and it goes Foop! and it becomes a full size staff like in an instant. Um, and with that, the spirals, the obsidian spirals become more exaggerated. And at the tip uh, of the of the staff now uh, has uh, small like purple runes in it that now glow slightly more. Um, and um, he hands it back to you. And he goes, uh, that, my friend right there, is a mighty fine staff. And I think that it's going to work out very, very well for you. And I will transfer that item now to your inventory so you can now look at it. Oh. Just have a big smile on my face and <laughs> eyes lit uh, up. Train, you should now see in your inventory a new item. Seraxis. A slender rod made of obsidian glints ominously in the low light. Intricate runes spiral down its length, faintly glowing with eldritch energy. Alertness. While holding the rod, you have advantage on wisdom, perception checks, and on rolls for initiative. Spells. While holding the rod, you can use an action to cast true seeing once per long rest. Charlatan, out of combat, you can knock on your rod. You can knock your rod twice against the surface to create a minor illusion. The illusion cannot be larger than a one-foot cube. Commune, commune, you can commune with the rod of eldritch might at any point. If in combat, this would take an action. However, the answer may not always be clear. That's cool and also ominous. So I kind of hold the rod up to the light and examine its new extendo form big smile yes, on my face with purple energies yeah. I, I i look back at barnabas and kind of a uh what's the word he's just standing just there really... open mouth smiling like as yes. big as yours is <laughs> like he's just so excited for you to have I look this at him thing with excitement and i say so what did it say to you well, we can't oh. we can't spoil all the secrets tonight, you know. <laughs> and he looks over at um, at Ricky and he says, "Your axe right there is quite fancy as well." Oh, shoot. okay. Um, <laughs> Would you mind I if I take a look at that thing? I look down and, just, and um, nervously hand it over. <laughs> as soon as you hand it over, it just falls down <laughs> to the ground, and it's like he falls over with it because it's way too heavy for him. And he's like, oh, yeah, he, uh, "Would you it's mind like, putting what? it up on the desk over here for me?" I lift it with one hand and put it over <laughs> like it weighs nothing. It's <laughs> so strong, this one. He's like grabbing your calf and like your arm and stuff like that. And he like just pats it. <laughs> this one, this one right here, you know. Um, and he's like spends some time. Um, looking over, kind of tracing his finger around, like the, um, the uh, the runes that are that are also engraved onto your uh, your axe here, and, and he goes, "Oh, this is things incredible! All right, here you go." <laughs> and he kind of just tries to push it off of the table, and um, that right there, that thing is scary. If you yeah, want to tell it, everybody what you got now, when you... oh, I see it now. Oh yeah. dear, that's a lot of text. Okay, wait, hold on a second. It's called Wolfsbane, and it's uh, <laughs> it's an artifact, and it's a great axe. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, 
A one-handed axe with a wolf's head carved into the hilt. The blade is razor sharp and the surface is covered in silver runes that go faintly under the moonlight. When swung, the wielder feels a surge of primal energy as if they take in on the speed and ferocity of a wild wolf. And it has two abilities. When the uh, predators strike, when the barbarian lands a critical hit with wolfsbane, the target must make a constitution saving throw or be inflicted with a bleeding wound. The wound causes the target to take 1d6 slashing damage at the start of each of their turns until they receive magical healing or succeed on a DC 15 medicine check. That's absurd. <laughs> um, the other ability is Hollow of the Wolf. Once per long rest, the barbarian can unleash a fearsome war cry that calls upon the spirit of the wolf. All enemies within 30 feet must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become frightened for one minute. Allies within the radius gain advantage on their next attack roll. Okay. <laughs> That's a cool graphic, too, you have on there. <laughs> Did you yeah. remember that? I'm going to... Uh, yeah. all, all, all those graphics are just AI generated. Um, I just it's wanted cool something in there though. just to, that was somewhat relative to what it was. We will we'll replace them with real stuff later on, I'm sure. With real art. Custom. Custom art. Oh, yeah. Hit that print. Okay, all right. So you guys all have incredible things. Who wants to see what their stuff is next? Me, 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 me. <laughs> okay. He goes, all right, all right, young one, come on over here. I don't know if that was in I... character or not, but it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I march over and... Uh, I guess show him the gauntlets. Uh, please, please, and he kind of like gestures you to take them off so he can actually like look at them. Okay, I take them off and he picks them up them. and he you know, okay. he, ta he takes them from your hands. You know, it's it's okay. Okay. Um, and he's like puts them down and he kind of puts his small hands in them and like you see the gloves go and they fit his hands perfectly as well and he kind of okay. like clenches his hands a little bit and he goes man how are you missing with these these things are incredible and he, he pulls them off oh dear <laughs> i missed one okay maybe twice <laughs> okay well here you go and he, he pulls them off and he goes and he like helps you put them onto your hands and he like tightens them up because yeah, i think you just you didn't have them on tight enough i think you know and uh, that's what was wrong with it <laughs> yeah and you should see them now in your inventory so yours are yours are a little bit different because like fist weapons are kind of weird in this game. So they're technically oh. listed as a ring, but yes, yeah, Zephyr and Lightbringer. Oh, they have names. <laughs> <laughs> so one of them is called Zephyr. It has an ability called Whirling Strikes. Once per short rest, you can unleash a flurry of blows that strikes all enemies within ten feet. <gasps> Each target must make a Dexterity saving throw or take damage equal to the monk's unarmed strike. Plus dexterity modifier. Oh my god, am I dexterity modifier? Lightbringer. Radiant strike. On a critical hit, Lightbringer's attacks deal an additional 1d6 radiant damage, or you can blind the target for one round unless they succeed on a constitution saving throw. Jesus Christ. Okay, all right. So you have Zephyr and Lightbringer. Not bad. Um, okay, so there's only two of you left. I'll put my dagger on the table. Ooh, a da I love daggers. As he like looks back at you, <laughs> um, especially these daggers, these type of daggers. And he picks it up, and he like makes a point of uh, of holding it up in the air, and like squinting his eyes at it. And then all of a sudden, the blade, the the dark like kind of shadowy looking blade, literally vanishes into shadows, like a. Um, like a swirling ethereal sort of like figure of a blade is in uh, the place of it and always holding as a handle that and then he like as he like kind of swings it around it, it kind of disappears and then he like stops and it goes and it, the blade comes back and he, uh, he's like smiling huge while he's giving you back this uh, this dagger now if you refresh your page you should see it in your inventory and then you can tell everybody what you got <clears throat> I got Night's Fang. It says this dagger was normal at first glance, but as you lift it and move the <laughs> it, the blade disappears. In its place, a shadow of ethereal image or blades left behind. This blade makes no sound and is no heavier than its dark walnut handle. And then when you roll a 20 on your attack roll with this weapon, 
Your blade splits the da- um, splits and damages them with a smaller blade of shadow. The target takes an extra 2d4 uh, damage of the weapon's type. When you attack with this blade, makes no sound. So, it's stealthy boy. Also, is that Ooh. a nat 20 or is it going to be dirty 20 as well? Uh, nat 20, I believe. Yeah, how roll it, it a should 20. Be. Yeah, when yeah. you roll a twenty, and he goes, he looks over at at you, Vince, and be like, "Now, do you you have something as well?" And he um, like points at your pendant. Uh, I toss the pendant in my hand, you know, up and down just to feel the weight, and then I toss it to mm-hmm. him after. Okay, he grabs it, clasping in his hands, and he looks at it, and kind of like holds it by the chain, and kind of spins it around, and then he kind of like just kind of flicks it a little bit with his finger or whatever and you hear this like harmonious hum that's like calms all of you even you ricky who has been kind of on edge this whole time <laughs> you kind of feel your nerves come to a still and you uh. feel comfortable uh and he kind of like and he hands the 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 pendant back over to you the hell was that all right let's see so a graceful pendant in the shape of a lotus flower made from silver and opal. The petals of the flower seem to shimmer with a soft light. The amulet feels soothing to the touch. Holding it brings a sense of deep inner peace like a still pond reflecting a clear sky. Mm. Uh, while you wear the holy symbol, you gain plus one bonus to spell attack rolls and saving throw DCs for your spells. Grasping the pendant, you can create a circle of dim light uh, one foot up to 30 feet. Uh, you can extend this even further to 60 feet if you use both hands and not let go. And it will require concentration and to maintain as focus. I'm going to need a little hit of that later. <laughs> Anytime, dude. <laughs> also, uh, um, Bale 4, I've added the utility belt as well to your inventory. I forgot to do that as well. Um, Any looks over at you bail for and he goes oh yep, yep sorry i forgot about this as well and he hands you the user manual of the belt <laughs> <Comes in the bag. laughs> that's awesome i love it Thanks. i love it uh, can you read bail for <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it's okay there's pictures of barnabas in the in the thing too where basically it's just a picture of him like excitedly opening putting his hand in a pocket and then he lifts something out and it's just a question mark in his hand and he has a thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> I got the scale mail right. Just making sure. Uh, oh yeah, that's yeah. As soon as you guys all get your stuff back, you hear this like little gnome just like pitter pattering just back down the hallway. And it's just oh, I got it, Bo. <laughs> and, and, and he like trips. And he, like the scale mail slides towards your feet. Ah like, oh, yes, there you go. There you go. Oh, go ahead. You could take that. Uh, I want to pick it up and change into it while we're still just here chit chatting. So yes, uh, hopefully you guys all enjoy your, your your new items now that you know what you have. Um, honestly, I feel a lot more uh, secure with you guys around um, instead of the last people that I hired. I, I didn't even pay them. I just told them that I'd give them some wine when we got there. And they were just like, sure, we'll come <laughs> with. I'm not even sure if they were mercenaries. Uh <laughs> Anyways, if you guys uh, ever need anything, uh, you know, I uh, I run a pretty pretty tight ship here, and you could find me at pretty much any major city out here. Uh, ooh, and, and and he's like reaching through his like pockets or whatever. I actually I have something here uh, for you. And he threw like uh, oh, and he uh, lifts up his hat, and there's just like a stack of cards under his hat and he like oh, no. kind of takes off like a little bit of the top of the, of the ones or whatever and he puts his hat back on and he goes here 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 and he he hands it to train who's who's still like holding his staff oh, and, what? Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. yes yes here, if you, you ever need to know where i'm at just throw one of these into the air and he throw he gives you like a like five business cards of his that have mm-hmm. his face on it and his thumbs up wherever wherever you are if you need to know where i'm at you could just throw one of those into the air and it'll it'll point you right in the direction of where I'm at. Well, that's very useful. Thank you. I'll take it. Mm. And you have been very useful. <laughs> how, how is it you've come to know so much about bowel trinkets? Uh, well, I mean, I, I've been around the block a couple of years, a couple of decades, a millennia or two, maybe even. Who knows? Uh, and yeah, I, 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 I specialize in magic oddities and trinkets and stuff. I mean, I, I'm sure you're familiar. I'm sure there's you've known someone in your town that that, that is well at identifying items and 
uh, maybe even an inventor themselves. And he points to like his shelves just full of just what seems to be miscellaneous stuff uh, of just things you can't even make out the shape of, really. I've certainly run in circles where I've dealt with people that know quite a bit about magical items. I don't know so much about inventing. Well, if you ever need anything uh, out of the ordinary or uh, I don't want to say useless. You're a man after my own heart. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he will like turn back around. He'll like snap his fingers. Ah, here, here, here. Here's, a, here's an example. And he opens up one of the drawers again and he pulls out um, a little rubber ball and he puts it in your hand and he like closes your hand over it or whatever. And he goes, here. You could have this one, okay? This one's on the house, all right? Use this to 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 uh, um, to astound the weaker mind. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> and he points you over to a wall that's behind you, or whatever. He goes, go ahead, throw the ball at that wall. And I look the ball up and down, and I throw the ball at the wall. The ball bounces, and then it goes whoop, right back into your hand. Like oh, you're not shit. even trying, not even trying. Like you weren't even like expecting it or anything. It just bounces off of the wall and it comes right back into your hand immediately. Huh. That's all it does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I know what I'll use this, but it's very impressive, part of this. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out either, so it's now your problem. Uh, <laughs> anyways, enjoy your ball. Enjoy your items. Um, perhaps I'll see you guys in Neverwinter. It's not too far away from here. Didn't you need an escort? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, sure. I guess, you know, if you guys if you guys want to keep hanging out, that's fine that with me. I didn't want to overstay my welcome. You guys seemed like a tight crew, and, you know, I, yeah, I'm just old Barnabas. Well, it's obviously not going to be free, and since you got a lot of nice stuff here, you know, it would be beneficial for both of us, since we're going that way anyways. Well, I feel like I've already kind of, I'm already here, you know, at this point, you know, I don't feel like I need to pay you guys anything more. I, just, I did just pay you a lot of money. I don't know. If, hey, can't help you. I, yeah. I can't help. Can't help it. You know, got to try. Listen, I appreciate the effort as, 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 as a merchant myself. You know, there, there's no harm in trying. There's no harm at Tracy's waving his finger at everybody. But uh, I think we're close enough at this point that uh, we could all get there. No problem. All right. Well, Good luck with all the other kobolds and wolves and all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> if you can hit them. Oh. <laughs> I'm wondering something Ouch. about smacking this guy's beard off his face. <laughs> Thank you, Barnabas. You've been very helpful. Yes, very helpful. As of you. As he's like kind of like hold, like kind of <laughs> chewing you guys out of his like warehouse, like kind of corralling you. All right, and, and he's just uh, slowly kind of escorting you guys out towards the stairs and everything like that. Step back out into the light and take another swig of my wine. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for coming by. You know, we'll see you again at Barnabas uh, Bags and more. And uh, I'll see you guys in Neverwinter, yeah? Sure. You will. Great! And then, like, as soon as he says that at the top of his stairs or whatever, the whole thing just kind of goes, and it just, like, disappears into the ground. What? Wait, where are we? And you guys are now just at the camp. Okay. He's good. Just making sure. Yeah, you know, it was like after you guys left and went outside. <laughs> I like that guy. Bit of a bastard, that guy. <laughs> I don't know. He had a point. <laughs> sure. I, I mean, I wasn't going to say it, but... I will shyly pass out the rations that I made earlier. Oh. Thank and you, I Ricky. I'm sure it will pair excellent with the rest of this wine. All right. So, uh, unless you guys had anything else that you wanted to do during the night, uh, we can we can. No, I think we're good. I right? will attune. Yeah, feel free to just equip and I give your guys all all your stuff attuned. I did that. I'm assuming we're gonna camp here for the night. There's a campfire with all the cobalt and well. dead Heads. bodies. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can do uh, night watch. Get around up the cobalt and throw them on the fire. And how dark is it out? It's. It was dawn when we probably like. Start. No, it was evening. Yeah, it was the like the, the sun was setting. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably like ten, ten p.m. ish. It's pretty late. Guys had a we big just day. Use these tents that are already set yeah, up and camp out. Convenient. Except you know for all the bodies. Except for the bodies, but, you know. Okay. All right. So you guys, yes, you know, you set up camp, you know, you find your way, you, you, you clear out some room from those kobolds, move them around, get them out of the way. 
um, make use of the tents and the bedrolls and stuff that you guys got, and um, you guys can do a long rest. <laughs>